The government of Mexico is condemning the separation of families at the U.S. border. Mexico's foreign relations secretary says the country does not promote illegal migration. But it cannot remain indifferent in the face of something that clearly represents a violation of human rights. El Salvador and Honduras are also expressing concern. Teresa Cardinal Brown is here to delve into the issue. She's the director of immigration and cross border policy at the Bipartisan Policy Center. Thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. Glad to be here. Is this zero tolerance policy an effective means of stopping? illegal immigration? I think right now we don't know. We haven't seen the numbers significantly decline because of this this policy put in place. Um, but you know it's hard to imagine that we are trying to make a rival in this country worse than the situations that people are leaving from. If they're fleeing crime and violence uh, and believing that they or their children will die where they're staying, it's hard to believe that we're going to, as the United States, put in effect a policy that's going to deter them from coming. This policy has been described as inhumane by some, and as a policy expert, if this isn't the answer, what is? I'll be honest with you, I think part of the problem is that we continue to think that somehow we can uh, staunch people from coming, deter people from coming, instead of looking at the system that processes them when they arrive. One of the reasons that we're in this situation is that we have such a backlog of asylum cases, you know, 600,000 cases waiting to be decided. If we had a lot more resources put toward deciding these cases more quickly, then we could decide those who have valid asylum claims would be able to stay, those who don't would be removed more quickly, and we wouldn't have to invest in all of these measures. When I was just in Mexico, uh, the Catholic Relief Services Group was helping people who are in Mexico try to get asylum in Mexico. Mexico mm -hmm. is trying to get them to go back to their original countries where they're fleeing persecution, violence, war. The U.S. is also trying to get them to go back to these countries. So the countries are the ones that seem to me to have the issues mm -hmm. with war and with violence and gangs. So what is the solution to that? Well, the ultimate solution is to look at what's sending people to right. the United States. Obviously, um, when their situation is so terrible in those countries, what are we doing within those countries? What kind of foreign aid? What, how are we working with them on the rule of law in those countries to fight the gangs in those countries, to create economic opportunity in those countries? That's the ultimate solution, but that's a very long-term solution. In the meantime, we do have to consider how we consider the, the asylum applications of those who are arriving and what we do about it. The president is putting a lot of this back on Congress, and he's saying it's the body that must pass immigration reform. And as we heard from Jason Calvi, our Capitol Hill correspondent, there are many bills on Capitol Hill right now seeking to stop the separation of families. So is enforcing this policy simply a negotiating tactic, do you believe? I don't know that it's simply a negotiating tactic, but I think certainly the administration is trying to use it as one. Uh, the answer is that the administration could go back from their zero tolerance policy, go back to a process where they, you know, allow families to wait in the United States until their claims are, are adjudicated. They don't have to enforce this separation, um, but in doing so, they're trying to force the question on Congress. Congress could stop it by passing laws, but the administration also could just roll back that policy. Someone is describing it as a summer camp for kids. Have you heard that? What are your thoughts on that? I don't think it's a summer camp when, I mean, a summer camp, I would send my child for summer camp, but the child knows they're coming home. Um, these kids don't know when or if they'll be reunited with their parents. This is not a summer camp. Um, and, you know, I think that the problem is that we are forcibly separating them from their parents, and that has traumatic impacts for those children, probably for the rest of their lives. Teresa Brown of the Bipartisan Policy Center, thank you so much for your insights. You're welcome.